Put on your mental track shoes and run with me. This is the Pow Wow with Myra. Welcome to the Pow Wow. Today we have Rhonda and Rhonda. Can you? I, I don't. I'm, I probably won't even attempt your last name because I'll probably butcher it. It's Bader. Bader. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So to kick things off, I'd like to get started by getting to know who Rhonda is a little bit better. Okay. Um, so I was born here in uh, Grand Prairie, Texas. Um, grew up in Arlington, Texas. I live back and forth in um, Egypt. That's where my um, father's side of the family is from. Um, and I've just kind of always been back and forth. Oh, uh, yeah. from here in Egypt? Yes. Oh, cool. Interesting. Uh, as a child, even, like, would you go out there on vacation or did you live I, there? I I spent my first four years um, living there. And then uh, I went back for college for a few years and going back and forth in between. <laughs> nice. Nice. That's uh, that's really, really interesting. Um, and so what do you do now? What what is uh, and we'll, we'll we'll cover that gap. But but um, tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. I know you're doing something very exciting for the community. <laughs> yes, um, I'm excited about it. So um, I am kind of creating a movement. Um, I found that there is a huge uh, gap with our parents. Our parents need help in our communities um, and they're struggling heavily. So I had this idea I've been sitting on for the past nine years since I had my first kid. Mm. And it is to have an app where you can reach out to other parents in the community like on demand. Mm. And you can get help with everyday things uh, that, that it takes to raise a family. So I'm starting it here in Arlington. I mean, what's better than that? We have, I mean, what, 400, over 400,000 people living here, uh, over 150,000 families in here in Arlington alone. Um, it's diverse. It's big. Um, and it's everything that I'm familiar with. Right, right. And 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 you are an Arlington resident, right, currently? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay, okay, very cool. So, I mean, you, you mentioned parents need help. It sounds like you were one of those parents that Absolutely. needed help. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so my first experience of having a kid wasn't, you know, rainbows and butterflies. Mm. It was extremely hard. Um, I would say it's probably the hardest year I've, of my entire life. Um, really, and it just goes back to me not having the village that it takes to raise a family. I had zero help. Mm. So um, from my own personal experiences, um, you know, sharing with other moms along the way, I found that, you know, people that don't have the help from friends and family um, really struggle a lot. Mm. And it's the same narrative that I've found with everyone else. Right, right. I can I can totally see that. Um, and, and being a mom and still having a, for me personally, having a, a strong support, you still have a lot of challenging things, um, you know, and so I can't imagine for, for moms or caregivers or just any parent really out there, um, that is trying to raise a child and ma- and survive and and create a family. Mm-hmm. Now, um, if you don't mind me asking, um, how old were you when when you had your first child? Uh, twenty eight. Twenty eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and so as far as when you mean you didn't have su- like support, were you here in Arlington? Did you were you or did you, were you at a place where maybe your family members just weren't around? Right. So um, when I got married, I moved to Michigan. That's where my husband was uh, living at the time. Uh, and he was going to law school. Extremely demanding. Mm. Uh, he also had to do an internship on top of working, on top of studying. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, that first year of living there, it was um, icy, cold. <laughs> blizzards and just me and the baby at home um i did have postpartum anxiety um i know a lot of people don't like to talk about the ppd and and the anxiety that comes with having a baby um but i 
did not want to drive anywhere, especially in the ice and snow. Um, so yeah, I didn't really have much of a village or, or help, um, in Michigan. Yeah. yeah I just could say that. And so was, was your family in DFW or, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's here in the DFW. Okay. So, I mean, they would come to visit. You right. Know, my dad, especially, he would come almost every month just to visit for a few days. Yeah. But it's definitely not the same. Not the same. No. no. The day to day, sure. you know, picking up the diapers, the formula, um, just doing normal, like you still have to continue with your everyday, you know, errands and tasks and, you know, buying things that you need. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people know the first year with a baby is just, you know, extremely hard. <laughs> um, oh napping, you know, all the issues that come with that. <laughs> yeah, right. All the, the new, yeah. the new things that come without an instruction manual. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, so w did you spend your pregnancy in Michigan or was this, okay, yeah. okay. And was that your first kind of winter, winter? Yes, it was. I am all around Texas, Texas girl. <laughs> so that was <laughs> a huge shock for me. Um, I didn't like it. Obviously we ended up moving back here. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was, it was really hard with, I think for me particularly, not only was the snow a hard thing, I think it was just, you know, a lot of, a lot of women don't talk about having that first kid. And that, to me, I think it is the hardest for a woman, not only, you know, just physically all the things that you have to adapt to, um, but also like the mental things and the emotional things, you know, your identity changes, your, your day, your routine, you mm. know, your, the way you think everything changes. Mm. So I, I think that first year, especially moms definitely need more support and more help than we're getting. Right. <laughs> right. No, I, I, I definitely agree. I mean, more help can't ever be too much, right? right? It's actually nice to have options because having options it even alleviates some of that stress right. of you know uh, versus not having any options um so what what would you do like what was what was your go-to at the time you know a, as as a new mom you you understand some of these things mm -hmm. you know people you know talk about them but it's one thing to talk about it and it's another thing to experience it right. so what would you do to what what was your go-to to you know for what what would you do like to feel like better get your head <laughs> slightly over water you know what I mean because I I because I in that sense in the sense of being so in a state completely new, I mean, somebody, there can be new parents here in Arlington, mm -hmm. you know, that their families can be hours away, right? right? Um, so what what did you do in a place where you didn't really have that village? I mean, there's not much you can do. I, you know, I when I could, when my husband could, you know, he'd stay with the baby and, you know, let me go do my thing. Um, but it was very... Uh, not very often. Yeah, that I got especially to do that. especially him being in law school right. and having right. it was very demanding. Did you have any other children in Michigan, or no. or how and or after that first one, how long did it take for you to to, to sit and have a conversation and say, hey, because I I know you guys relocated yeah. to yeah. back to DFW, so what was that conversation like? Who started it, and you know how how did that happen? Because well, I'm sure, you, you know, know, my husband, he, I mean, it was pretty obvious I was struggling. It was mostly, it was mostly me in the sense that he knew I wasn't very happy there. Mm. And it's not that I didn't like the area. I like the area. I like the people there. You know, we connected with friends and his family, you know, but um, there wasn't anyone particular that I could just trust mm. and, you know, leave the baby or, right. you know, with him and I think it's really hard for first time parents to to ask for help. That's mm. such a huge even if someone offers it to you, it's like you you know how much work it is, you know. Um so you don't want to put that responsibility on someone else. Mm. Um but it, it you know, about a year, my daughter was about a year old and we had that conversation and he had some opportunities to come work here in Texas. Um so he came here to 
um, get his license and he passed the test and, you know, I work, we're living. And and now we're here. <laughs> three kids later, <laughs> got three, you know, three kids later, you know, I, you know, got a little more help here uh, than I did over there. So, you know, it, it got better. Um, but absolutely, you know, the pandemic, that was another really hard time. <laughs> I think mm. everybody really had a hard time uh, when they had children, you know, during that time. Did, did you, were you pregnant or did you have a baby during that time frame? I, my, my son, my third kid was born in 2018. So yeah. he was, oh, okay. he was, okay. he was around two years old. Um, what, but, was, what was the hardest for you um during the pandemic because i mean and yes i think i think already having the three children you know it's already it's already um from what i understand at the time i didn't have any kids but i know it was it was tough with having them uh, at home homeschooling them so with multiple kids i can't imagine like (laughs) being the parent being the teacher being the the, the 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 cook being mm-hmm. the cleaner being like Everything. there's all these hats yeah. <laughs> and i mean me having a 60 month old that now it's like you know w- when i have her all day it's like i have to pick and choose what i can do because most of the time i'm like chasing her right. or you know watching what mm-hmm. she's doing so yeah i mean during the pandemic i i can't i I cannot imagine the mm-hmm. life of all parents. And for some of my friends that have kids <laughs> themselves, I mean, yeah, it, it, everybody it got shaken up for yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. My daughter was just going to fifth, uh, kindergarten mm. and they did it online. Everything was online. So it was, you know, and then they gave her homework. <laughs> <laughs> they give you kindergartners homework. So, you know, had to, every day there was like five, you know, and they're easy assignments. So you have to still make sure they're they're doing it. Um, you got to make sure they 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 get focused right? to get it. <laughs> While the other two are like screaming and doing stuff in the background. And, mm. you know, you just make it work. It was just a weird time for everybody. Um, there was ups and downs in it. You know, my husband was able to work from home and, you know. He was available more too during that time, uh, but I think the hardest thing probably was um, just kind of being cooped up in the house with the kids. Mm. And you know, we we did a lot of outside time, but it's just it was just extremely difficult. <laughs> it's just everything was limited. Mm. Um, everything was yeah. limited. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it was very limited what you could do out. I mean, there was nothing really open out where you can just go yeah. and let yeah. them have some time unsupervised yeah. while you just kind of even relax so yeah okay so what would what would you say your biggest aha moment or biggest like lesson would be during that time that breakthrough so so since I had my first daughter I always had the idea of the app like I said and I just kind of brushed it off I was like yeah that would be cool mm. during the pandemic is when a lot of the gig work started coming becoming more accepted mm. you know, more of the ubers and doordash and right. delivery services um grocery deliveries everything it was just becoming more um yeah acceptable right um and i think at that time i was like why couldn't this work you know mm. why this would be um, you know amazing if we could just start helping the parents in the communities um in two ways, you know, I think in, in two ways it helps. Actually, three. I'll say three. On one side, parents can now set their own schedule, make their own money, um, do, you know, kind of take back the, the power and mm. having a kid, or having a family, raising a family, and generating an income. Mm. Um, a lot of the you know, I call them default parents. There's always one parent who kind of carries more of the load with the kids. Um, And if they can figure out 50-50, that's awesome. But for the majority, from what I personally know, there's always one default parent who, you know, they have to stay home when the kids are sick. They have Mm. to do the pickups and the drop-offs. You know, all the events. There has to be one parent that that should be there. Um, 
so you know, um, I, I want to help these parents get get back that power that that they don't have to do the nine to five, that they don't have to figure out a schedule that works with their kids. They can create their own schedule, work around the school schedules, um, right? Set their own prices, mm. and all the while, they're helping parents on the other side. So that mm. would be the second thing. The parents finally get help with child care or after school care. Um, one of the main things that I'm focusing on is newborn assistance. That's mm. what I call it. But postnatal, um, you know, somebody that has a newborn, a new mom, she just needs an extra set of hands. She just needs a couple hours to herself to shower to, you know, just whatever. Or even if she's just working, maybe she's working from home. Right. Um, someone who's experienced, she's already been there, done that. You know, go for a couple hours, charge, you know, whatever price um, per hour um, and just kind of be there and help out with the baby. Yeah, um, it's, I, I think that is huge, especially for new. I mean, for any mom, second time, third, fourth, what, whichever, mm -hmm. but like especially the yeah. the first time, because as a as a first time mom, I, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was like calling my mom every five minutes. Yeah. Nobody really knows. No one knows what they're doing. <laughs> and every right. kid is different. Like if, right. if you think you got it right with the first kid, the second kid comes along and they got a whole <laughs> new set of issues. So don't count on it. <laughs> That's what I hear. Um, as a matter of fact, my mom had five of us. There's wow. five siblings, right? right? Five of us. And so, I mean, she doesn't have to say we know now, but... Yeah. I mean, she even says like from our the pregnancies, the five pre pregnancies were different and us five are yeah. all 100 <laughs> percent different. Yep. Yep. And it's it's kind of weird how you all can grow up in the same household with the same parents, the right. same everything. And you just come out so different. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought that was weird. But then I, I see it in my kids, too. So really? it's <laughs> I think you're just born that way. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. And that was the second thing. Sorry, I, I interrupted. I just that's thought okay. that was, that was, that's a huge, yeah. big point. Absolutely. Big point. Yeah. So, you know, um, newborn care, um, transportation. Mm. That's something that's new. I know Uber is doing some kind of pilot run with that right now with, with the kids. Um, you know, I'm not sure, really sure to what extent, you know, who they're hiring to do those, but they're running it in California. Um, and I think that that's something really big. Mm -hmm. um, parents, I mean, there's only two parents and there's school, there's sports activities, there's school functions. Um, I mean, there's always somewhere that the kids need to be. And, right. you know, when they become, you know, teenagers and they start going out and about with their friends, you know, I always hear, I'm not there yet, but I always hear like I, the parent practically lives in the car because mm -hmm. they're just running around. <laughs> so, um, transportation is another thing that I'd like to add on the categories. Um, yeah. Tasks, um, education. Ooh, tasks are right? a good and one just too. Just running errands, helping with a party, um, I mean, really anything you could think of. Yeah. I, I just, I, I'd like to leave it open um, to let people get creative uh, with, with their that. business. One one other thing I really am excited about too is like for tasks or, you know, random things that, that people can offer services on is Arlington. Um, a lot of people are starting to visit. We have the entertainment district. We have Six Flags. We have Cowboys. We have rangers we have everything here right. so a lot of people are coming in from out of town um maybe somebody can offer like baby rental mm. people come in from out of town they have their family they don't have the car seats maybe they don't have the you know chairs they don't have like all these things that they might need um, right so yeah I, I encourage people to get creative i, I have so many ideas but you yeah know, I, I i think it can definitely turn into you know, something bigger. A hundred percent. I mean, I'm with you on that because um, even if I think of, of <clears throat> like even us, say we plan a trip somewhere that has mm -hmm. services such as our village mm -hmm. and I can, um, and I don't have to pack my car seat right. and I don't have to pack all these things and get them through security at the airport. Right. You know, um, like that's, I, I would definitely like <laughs> sign me up for that. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. Yes. I, you know, I, it's not a matter of 
is it going to work? Um, I know a lot of people are on board. They love the idea. It's something that's needed. It's something that's lacking. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I I don't think that it's it's a matter of is it going to work. It's Now it's just a matter of me figuring out how to make it work, mm-hmm. how to get that system down right. Um, and that's what I'm working on now. Um, so I don't have the app yet. I'm in the development. I have a developer. I have a designer. We're working on it step by step. Um, and, you know, just like anyone else starting a business, you have to sometimes pivot. Sometimes you have to navigate. For um, sure. My goal in this is to figure it out. I'm not I'm not going to stop. Yes. <laughs> you know? So no matter, you know, what kind of issues come up, um, I'm going to figure it out and make it work. I love yeah. I love that attitude, you know, uh, to begin with. And I love the idea. I love the attitude. Because because it just shows how much you believe in this. And Absolutely. I know that any parent can that that's hearing this can definitely say, yep, <laughs> it's not it's not easy, right. you know, or e- even any any guardian that helps, you know, their their relatives already right. at at no cost, <laughs> you know, just helping out look now you can help more people and make some money right. um and just overall help because you know yes we mentioned how you know it's growing or there's the entertainment district mm-hmm. you know we have Lowe's which now we're gonna have Arlington is soon gonna have a convention center yeah so you know not only are big big events gonna happen that come to DFW they're mm-hmm. not just gonna happen in Fort Worth and they're not just gonna happen in Dallas now they're also gonna happen here yep. in Arlington in our backyard right in our backyard um and but but I mean that doesn't take away I believe if I if I remember correctly your services or the platform will be available at throughout DFW right it's just not Arlington not exclusive for Arlington <clears throat> it's not right now so my goal right now is to um Test it on a smaller scale. So I'm working right now on gathering um, people who want to offer the services in Arlington, Euless, Grand Prairie, Mansfield, uh, just the surrounding cities, just so that, you know, for the purpose of scaling it and testing it out. Mm -hmm. Um, So first I'm like, maybe just a few months. Once the app is is launched, I'll spend a good three months just in my local area um, working on it, getting feedback, seeing what's working, what's not working. Mm. Um, And once I get that, you know, I get a good system down, um, then I'll create the ultimate app. And then I will go for the DFW and then Austin, Houston, San Antonio, and just... yes. That's it. <laughs> yes, and uh, and as 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 it grows, yes, for sure, for sure. Um, and and um, I had a question I was going to ask about. Um, oh, you mentioned feedback. I love the fact mm-hmm. that you know you you mentioned you know you're gonna you're gonna gather the feedback and um and, and make adjustments as needed. Right. right? So. Um, is there like, is that, is that going to be part of the platform or like feedback to submit feedback? Um, so yeah, beta testers. So usually when you get like, um, a new app, um, you get beta testers to start. So basically they go in, um, okay. understanding that, you know, they will, you know, do this free of charge. Um, but for the purpose of offering feedback. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, definitely. I'll probably spend about three months doing that. Um, and then we'll go from there. So the good thing about the good thing about starting here is, you know, it's my community. Mm. And, you know, I'm very familiar with the, the people here. And, you know, I think all, Arlington is like it has like 100 different personalities. It's so diverse. <laughs> yes. You know, the South Arlington, North Arlington, you know, everybody is just a little different right (laughs) we're in the same city but you know it's just a different atmosphere um different age groups Mm -hmm. and i I really love that about arlington um but what i'm starting to do uh is i am getting more in touch with the community right now um i do have a uh, a toy drive coming up next month Mm. that i am doing for single parents um so I do see a lot of uh, people struggling right now. Mm. Uh, the economy, you know, 
lay, just layoffs, just a lot of different reasons. Um, Inflation. Everything, yeah. Everything. <laughs> I think everyone's having a hard time. Uh, but my heart is really with like the single moms and the single dads who, you know, they just want to give their kids a good Christmas and, mm. you know, they don't, they don't know how right now. So, so yeah, my goal is um, we'll do a toy drive and I'm going to kind of pilot test the Our Village app before the app is developed. Mm. <laughs> so I have a lot of things in the works but so one of the ways that I'm going to do that is um we're going to start kind of advertising for people who want to ex- uh, earn extra money um so that they could uh distribute the mm. toys mm. um so we're doing a directory and um basically it'll have the person's profile information everything that would be on the app pictures mm. their services they offer the rates Um, but what I'm trying to do with, uh, the toy drive is kind of pilot test it by offering people to take on like a task job and they set the price. Mm. You you give me the price. This is what, this is what our village is. So you offer the service, you do, you know, what's needed, you know, whether it's, you know, everyone is background checked, by the way, that's one of the things that I think makes our village um you know different than all these other kind of gig apps i don't mm. and i don't like to call it a gig app because this is our family's lives and yep. livelihood so um everyone on the app it, is going to be background checked mm. and it'll be you know um violent crimes sexual crimes and if they're like on the database like terror watch data list nationally yes. uh, so it's all on a national level um and if, you know, if, if I, I think I need to make the platform safe, I want, and I think that's a big deal for parents. Um, yes. At the very least to know that if somebody is coming to my house to watch my kid or if someone is getting my address because they need to pick up something or a task, uh, they want to know too, okay, I'm not going to the stranger's house and, you know, maybe they'll do something to me or, you know, whatever it is. 100%. So I do want to make everyone on the app uh, background checked. Um, but in the sense of the toy drive, back to that, sorry. Um, yeah, I want, I want them to give me a price. Tell me, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm inviting you to come take on this job as a contractor. Uh, I will want you to get background checked. Um, give me your driver's license. We'll get a copy of it. Um, and then you give me a price. What do you think? It can be hourly. It could be a set price. Um, but I kind of want people to understand that this is what our village is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not hiring you for a set price. I want you to set, give me that price. Right. So- I, yes. I, I love I love the idea that you're basically creating this platform that has it's it's limitless. Right. Um, and and it's it's not like uber where yes they they hire you know or not they hire that people people sign up they get checked and Mm -hmm. they have to have insurance and stuff but that's it i mean whatever the 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 only income they can addition make additional to whatever the platform pays them is you know whatever tips they get right Right. So they don't really have control of that. They just have control of their time, which is nice. Mm. Right. But this is that on another level, because this is like their this is this is like their business. Right. Right. Um, And, you know, they they are in full full control of their, um, you know, their pricing Mm -hmm. versus, you know, well, I, I, I took this hour ride and there was traffic and I spent this hour and only made 10 bucks right. and, you know, people were upset or yeah. Yeah. whatever the case may be. Uh, this is a whole different, it's a different animal. Right. Oh. Yep, it is. <laughs> for, for the better, it you is. know, for the, for the better. Um, and so I love also the, the, I was going to ask about the privacy, right? Because it's huge for any parents mm-hmm. to be able to trust their kids you mm-hmm. know they're everything right you know especially you mentioned after having your first baby you know you have we, we have like anxiety yeah. we have all of these feelings that mm-hmm. we have to battle through you know mm-hmm. as well so this definitely takes a huge huge um kind of weight off the shoulders right. right um and 
I don't know if you if you mentioned it while we were live or if this was before, mm-hmm. but I, I know you mentioned um, um, that that people will be able to rate each yeah their the the services they received. Right, right. So. Uh, one of the big things that I know about um, a lot of these apps, when you hire someone, so, you know, you give that person who's offering the service um, a rating. They get rated. You know, they were late. They were not communicative. They were, you know, they cancel on me, whatever it is. Um, well, I would like to offer it for both ways mm. because we don't see the complaints of the people who are doing the hiring. Mm. A lot of them back out. That was one of the biggest issues that I had with like care.com. Um, you know, canceling, just stop communicating, um, just show up one time and then just, you know, ghost after that. Um, so I, in order to prevent that from happening, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to have a mandatory five star rating for both the person who hired that person and then the person who's you know doing the service Mm. um and it would be rated on things like you know communication um timeliness you know everyone will have you know each side will have their own um set set of ratings yeah right so i i want this to to be a place where everyone's serious about it everyone's serious about getting help Mm. it's not like oh let me see no like we we're here to to offer a helping hand and um this is people's livelihoods yes. you know all these things it comes down to school work you know everyone's everyone's livelihood is on the line so we really can't mess around with that when it comes to the app i want everyone to to also start like using each other mm. there's a lot of there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of families and parents that do love to help. I see it all the time. Um, I'm in a lot of the mom groups. That's, you know, kind of how I got a lot of my, I wouldn't say research, but, you know, a lot of the feedback, you know, just seeing how, you know, the mm. questions that they ask for, the kind of help they ask for, the issues that come up, and it's just constant. And it's the same story most of the time. Mm. But there's a lot of people that are willing to help. You know, yeah. when somebody posts on there, I need help. I've seen them. I need help with groceries, you know. That's so true. Um, some people be like, you know, message me. I'll, you know, put out an, a Walmart order for you to pick uh, to pick up, you know, and I'll do that every once in a while as well. So it's like we're all willing to help. And then we just don't parents, have the platform. Right. Right. We, we want to help people that we know that we're not getting scammed. We're not, right. we're not getting screwed over. Um, it's somebody that genuinely needs help. Um, and then for the other side, it's like um, offering, you know, offering services uh, to other people. They're willing. They're willing and they want to help. And then. You know, like I said before, for parents, it's hard to ask for help. Like, you know, even mm. just like your family sometimes, it's hard to like, you know, hey, can you watch the kids? Can you go pick this up for me? Can you? Everybody has their own life. But if you see that someone's on a platform, they're ready and willing, you mm. know, uh, you pay them. And, you know, everybody at the end of the day, you get what you need. They got paid. You got help. So Everybody wins. Right. Uh, it's a win-win all across. And I would hope that. You know, people would start establishing relationships as well. Ooh. That was that was one other big thing that I think our village could kind of tackle. It's like, you know, a lot of parents feel secluded, you know, not having mom friends, not, you know, really knowing many people when they mm. move here, especially in the last few years. A lot of people are moving here from out of state. Right. So having having that maybe building a relationship with someone having that, that, that out, right? village right the village that's what it all comes back to <laughs> our village it's our village you know that is so huge um and i'm glad you mentioned that because even i on, on the on the facebook groups that i'm on uh or even sometimes not even a, in a facebook group sometimes just some random friend that i have on facebook somehow um that's you know and 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 is it's uh, they've they've I've seen these posts where people ask like hey like I feel lonely I just need a friend yeah. they're just asking a lot. reaching out just for somebody to have some human connection yeah. almost right, right? Um, because it gets lonely. yeah <laughs> and I never really thought about it mm-hmm. but I've seen them and as you're speaking I'm I'm remembering I'm thinking of of all the help 
that maybe haven't really it hasn't really resonated with me as much as yeah. now as as you're mentioning it but you know especially after covid people you know kind of cooped in their mm-hmm. homes and sometimes getting out of that mode yeah. again was it's hard and mm-hmm. you know everybody's life life's got shaken up in some way shape or form right um you know some worse than others people lost fa- loved yeah. ones yeah. Um, and then on top of life just happening because of life happens. Right. Um, and so having that village where it's, where it's almost like you have, um, you know, you, you'll be able to see their profiles for, and, and correct me if I'm, if I'm saying this, uh, if I say any, anything incorrectly, but you know, they'll be able to see a profile. They'll be able to see their ratings. Mm-hmm. They'll be able to see what services they offer. Uh, maybe even a picture of the person. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so th- even before the connection is made, they're already going to know so much mm-hmm. about that person, right. um, which makes it easier. So the door is already open mm-hmm. to, you know, create friendships, right. create, you know, your own circle I'd also like or to add, add to it. Sorry. <clears throat> so that's okay. That's that's true. Um, one feature I'd like to add to it. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it with the MVP. The MVP is just a minimal viable product. That's what I'm building right now. So mm. it's just a prototype with the most basic features. That's just so I can test um, the system, get the system going, see, you know, the gaps in them and work with that. Um, see the bugs, yeah. get the bugs out. Right. So um, with the MVP, but... Ultimately, I would like to have it where you can sign in um, your fo- with your phone number or like your Facebook, and then you'll be able to see which of your contacts are already like on the app. And then from there, I, I would like mm. to have a feature where you could see who is connected to that person or who knows Ooh. that person. So that at least you're like, okay, if you're hesitant to hire someone, you're like, oh, well, you know, so-and-so knows them, you know ask him about him real quick or whatever it is, or you might yes. make him feel more comfortable. I think, I think the trust factor is like the biggest thing that I'm trying to tackle with this. Yes. And, and like I said, I'm still like in the process. Um, I have my face group going, Facebook group going within one month of having it. I have close to 300 followers mm. and these are like people that I have a marketing team. Amazing, amazing women. They're good at, great at what they do and um they, they kind of help me with the social media so what we do is we'll kind of like find people in the groups when they just throw it out there like i need help with this or how do i do this or how can i get a job does anybody know of a job you know we'll just kind of mention it mm. and if you know if you want to learn more join the facebook group so you can stay updated with the the launch dates and information uh, and, and immediately like they go like immediately go join the group and I mean, that tells me like, that's like genuine mm. organic, like, like support and people really want something like this. They need yes. something like this. So yes. I, I definitely think, um, it's just, I, I think everyone's just kind of, I feel like they're kind of waiting for something like this. Um, and they're hearing about it, you know, I'm kind of putting it out there on social media and it's just a matter of me figuring it out. What's well, going to work for everybody, mm. the safety, you know, the just just the whole system for sure yeah. i mean yeah there's definitely a lot but i i love how you're reaching out to people and and getting this feedback so that you can tailor your 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 platform right. to meet all these needs and and hopefully more and leaving yeah. it still open for their for people's own creativity and yeah. and and expand on that um that that what is what that's awesome uh, that's awesome what is the name of the facebook group for people so, that are listening so that they can look it up and go join. Sure. Uh, so it's uh, Arlington Caretaking and Transportation and it's Dash Our Village. So obviously we couldn't put all the categories. But, right. You know, we want people to know, like, you, you can come into this group and find help with these things, um, discussions, or, you know, if you need help with babysitting, uh, if you need help with transportation, yeah, this is the place. And also it's, you know, where we are discussing the app and I'm doing polls and asking opinions and, you know, just kind of getting feedback along the way. Yeah. Yeah. And so you mentioned you thought about this about nine years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what was what was some of the the mental 
limiting beliefs, I would say, that mm -hmm. maybe kept you from really going and, and just pursuing it? What would you say? You know, because I'm sure a lot of people have different ideas. Right. Uh, people have ideas all the time based on their own personal struggles of whatever that is. And so I think it's always helpful to know that, hey, like, yeah, this person is doing it, mm -hmm. but it's not like, oh, I just thought about it last night and here I am making it happen. It's mm -hmm. like we all have these mental limiting beliefs. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what, what would you say some of those, uh, what were some of those for you uh, thinking of sure. this idea of nine years ago? Well, um, first of all, when you're raising a family and you have all young kids, there's not much time to expand you know mm. i feel like during that time my creativity was gone you know um my time is gone everything i just kind of put it on the back burner anything for myself i put it on the back burner mm. and you know now my kids are older they're all in school so i'm, I'm getting that time back they're more self-sufficient um and i'm slowly getting that um all of it back the creativity the time the confidence even you know mm. you you kind of when you're in that mode it's just you know it's all, honestly a survival mode you're just trying mm. to make it through the day you got lots of things to keep up with and you know lots of things to do everyone's depending on you their lives depend on you um all their school functions and activities everything comes before yourself mm. you know um so in that time frame you know i wasn't thinking too much about it but I, like I said, after the pandemic, when I, I started seeing it, like, you know, evolving, um, I started reading into it a little bit more. Like, okay, what does it take? So initially, you know, I was seeing it takes like $60,000 to create an app. Well, I was like, I can't do that. Then I started reading um, more into it, and I found out I can just – do an MVP, which is what I'm doing now. This is a minimal viable product. You start with something simple, you get that built, you can hire a developer, you don't have to get a big you know, developing app company mm -hmm. to do it. Um, and you start locally, you start small. Once I realized I can do that, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, you know what, let's, let's try it. And so I started really digging into the whole startup world, okay. reading, you know, YC Combinator, I follow them. I love their videos. I love their advice. I started reading about, um, you know, startup uh, stories. Mm. And one of them that stood out to me was um, the creator of Care.com. She had no tech background. She had no background in any of those, you know, any of these industries. Um, I don't even think she had a background in business. Um, but she found herself, you know, really needing help with, uh, her father, her father was elderly. She, you know, wasn't working and she had three kids. Um, and she started the care.com, you know, website and the app. Um, so it's doable. When I started realizing mm. it doesn't mean like it, you don't have to be anybody specific. You don't have to be in that industry uh, to do something like this. Right. And there was one video I was listening to it was a podcast on uh, YC Combinator and it was a question someone had to ask a question and the guy was like there's no wrong or right way to do this you know to me I'm thinking there's a process to follow and I don't know that process no mm. he's like there's no wrong or right way this is all about you figuring it out and you having the perseverance to keep on you know trying different things until you figure it out so once I realized, I was like, okay, there is no wrong or right. I can do this. Why not? Mm. That's. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, it's crazy how the language that we use in our, in our head really yeah. changes how we see things and mm -hmm. how big or small that mountain is that we want to climb. Right. Right. Um, I was just at a seminar maybe a week and a half ago and there was a speaker, Jamie Kern. Um, and so, you know, long story short, her message is you're not crazy. You're just first. <laughs> and, you know, that really yeah. stuck with me, you know, especially for, you know, when, when you have ideas, I'm like, Oh, you know, me yeah. like, you know, like, Oh no, like, 
I, I don't have maybe the background or I don't have the family in this area. Mm -hmm. I don't have whatever, fill in the blank, right? Right. And it's just a matter of, it's. but I think it, there's, you mentioned earlier, uh, we were having a conversation before the podcast. I don't know if this was live or not, but I think you mentioned, um, um, you mentioned something about like, it was kind of eating at you in a bit, like the yeah. idea yeah. and like w without a acting on it. So can you like tell us a little bit about like those feelings? Because I feel like that is where, that is where like, like, like something's going to grow because you mm -hmm. mentioned, you know, you have to persevere and it's really easy to do what you need to do, but it's also really easy to do yeah. what you're not supposed to do right. or what, what you don't have to do right, right like right. they're both easy you choose your hard mm -hmm. um and so i can feel your drive you've mentioned perseverance like you've like i i i i'm like this is no bs like i believe in your product Thank like you. i i truly do and and even the, the story of of coming up so so you know i'm just curious to know um a little bit of, of how you handled those feelings sure. at the time. So. And if you want an example, yeah. for example, <clears throat> I had similar feelings like with the podcast, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, uh, I really dislike watching myself on yeah. video, on camera <laughs> pictures. I mean, I take them when I have to, right. you know what I mean? Now though, you know, a year later I feel like 100 percent much more comfortable mm -hmm. and now I, it's just like it's just you know another <laughs> video to edit and yeah. me watching me and now i'm watching all these cues but all this this fear that i had prior to starting it yeah you know um i thought about it in 2020 actually oh, yeah and uh but the fear of camera was just kind of keeping me behind like not doing it and then me thinking of being that role model that I want to be mm -hmm. for my child yes. and and wanting them that is a big thing. to be the like to be courageous and tackle their fears and I'm like watching myself in the mirror thinking these thoughts but mm -hmm. then like wanting to do the podcast and there's so many times where I'm like oh that would have been such a good guest for the podcast oh that's such a good story right so it got to the point where it was eating me also alive where I was like, I just got to do this. Like right. it was all almost hurting me more not to do it. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's, that's exactly the feeling I got. Yep. Mm. So I started, you know, every time I would hear about like a new app, like that's similar, I'd be like, Oh crap. <laughs> you know, I was so afraid, like somebody would get this idea and start working on it. And I don't think I could live with myself after that. Mm. <laughs> You know, along the way, I, I have a journal and I would just write down all my ideas. I just have and I still have this journal. So for the last three years, I've been putting all these ideas down. Ooh. And every time I would think of something and it's usually at night. I don't know why. Like I'm in bed and I can't sleep and I'll get excited. I'll get excited about these ideas. So I'll just write them down. And mm. so, yeah, every time I would hear about like a similar app, I'm like, no, I need to get on it. I would be really upset if somebody got this idea before me. Um, you yes. know, so I mean, even if they did, I, I would still go for it, you know, but yeah, you know, it wouldn't be, you know, yeah, you just want, you want to, this is your idea. This is my idea. I want to do it. Right. Like it's been cooking. <laughs> yeah, like I gotta, yeah. I gotta act on I gotta it. Act on it. And then going back to what you said about being that example for your kids, you know, I, my kids have seen me kind of just be the mom at the house. Mm. You know, I work from home. Um, they understand that, but overall I am mom. I'm just, you know, doing all the house duties and, you know, taking them here and there and, you know, and I want them to get, get that example from me. Mm -hmm. Like they see their dad working. That's great. Love my husband. He's an awesome, awesome dad. Um, but that's normal to them to see dad getting up every day and going to work. But I want them to see me in that light. Maybe not getting up every day going to work, but they can see me at home doing it. And they have been seeing me working very hard for the last month. And I think it's just maybe my older daughter that understands. So I'll kind of show her things along the way. Like, you know, she thinks it's awesome. I told her I had close to 300 people in the group and she just like her jaw dropped. <laughs> it's like, 
you know, it's such I a love big deal. That. Yes. <laughs> so I'm kind of like bringing them along on the journey as well, and I'm cool. keeping them posted. And I told them, you know, today I'm coming to do a podcast, and I, you know, I tried to show them what that was, and you're gonna be on YouTube. <laughs> That's what they. <laughs> you're gonna be a YouTuber. I'm like, no. <laughs> But, you know, it's it's I think that's awesome to show my girls that you can do this like it's doable. Mm. Don't be afraid. I used to be afraid of failing. Mm. I used to be afraid. I I think I had a lot of good ideas. Um, I've always kind of been that person that thinks outside of the box. And my dad is like that. Mm. I got that from my dad. All of his businesses that he's ever had have been like different. Mm. There's nothing like particular, uh, nothing uh, usual. And I think that I got, I got that from him, just thinking outside of the box. And when when we have a good idea, he's just like, do it. Go see mm. what it takes. You know, it's always just like, go see what it takes. You know, see what it takes to do it. It's never, uh, no, you know, that's not a good idea. Or what do you do? No, it's go see. Oh, I and love so, that. you know, I spent the last 15 years on and off working at our family's company. It's my dad's company. Uh, it's in the trucking industry. And so I can, you know, when I first started there, I was still a teenager and my dad was never really good with, uh, teaching. Like he doesn't show me like, this is what you need to do. Uh, it's more like, well, go figure it out or go look it up (laughs) or, you know, just talk to them, go, go, you know, see. And every time it was like, oh, okay. You know, I can, I can just do whatever like I can do anything to figure this out okay sure so you know I would That's try different huge. things and talk to different people and I don't know it gave me confidence mm. to know like there's not just one way of doing things you just try different things oh, oh. that that is that is such a gift um really like the, the fact that you know your dad would say you know go figure it out yeah <laughs> because in essence it's he you know he's he was kind of preparing you to be resourceful right right and Mm -hmm. so whatever idea you had I mean you know you could find the answer versus this is the answer and now you're grown you're a grown adult and daddy doesn't have my answers anymore (laughs) what do I do right yeah yeah Yeah. and now you have to start all over again and figure out how to be resourceful (laughs) Um, I will say, you know, I, I'm, I'm very close with my dad. He doesn't understand particularly like the whole gig in- industry and the apps and startups. He's, you know, he's kind of old school. So his way of doing business is not going to be the same as what I'm doing. And so he doesn't really understand it. But I think he is, you know, he's pretty proud, you know, that I'm just kind of doing it. I'm figuring it out, mm. you know, so that makes me feel <laughs> yeah yeah i mean and and it sounds like he really did lay the foundation uh with just helping you figure out how to be resourceful and 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 not only that i, I would say one of the biggest things it's the support too absolutely um uh, because you know what if because you know there's a lot of um there could be there's a lot of people out there where you know they have an idea and you know uh, unfortunately, their closest people, their family members are like, you'll never be able to do that or yeah. we don't have the money or, mm-hmm. you know, just get a job. Right. You know, just get a job. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so meaning well. Right. Of like course. not not meaning not well. Right. But just um, but just having that support in that sense uh, kind of it's kind of like a net where yeah. if I fall, it's OK. Yeah. I absolutely feel that from mm. my my family. My dad and my husband are extremely supportive, and you know they may not understand uh, how much we need this. I think, um, but they definitely offer that support, and you know, go for it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So it's yeah, it it does give me the drive. I'm I I feel blessed that um, I'm able to do this. You know, I'm, I don't have that limit. Mm. so um, I'm pretty blessed yes yes and why not right like it's it's like we're already here I mean sometimes the hard thing is figuring out what the what our passion is yeah it's like that can almost I would say that would probably be like a like a like a tougher pill to swallow it's like I'm here I hate my job 
I see all these new entrepreneurs out there doing their thing, yeah. but I just don't know what I want to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> like think... that this is a better problem to have. Right. Absolutely. I always knew since I was younger, I want to have my own business. Mm. I've always kind of said that. And then I've always known I want it to be meaningful. Mm. You know, it doesn't. I don't want to just do a business just to have a business. I want to have a meaningful business that means something to me, something Ooh. that I'm passionate about and something that I will wake up every day and be proud of. Mm. And I want to, I want to do it and I want to do more. So, um, you know, I, I can honestly say I do th believe I found my passion through motherhood. Um, you know, it's been a long journey, um, a lot of hardships and a lot of really, really great, great things that came from it, you know? So, um, I will say like parenthood has really given me purpose. It's given me drive. I always say like, like my kids have given me so many things that they have no idea, mm. you know, absolutely. It's hard. Absolutely. But they make me work harder. They make me more motivated. They made me. They make me more responsible. They make me self. Um, you know, uh, what is the word? Self aware. Self aware. There you go. Yeah. You know. Um, and overall, they make me a better person. Yes. I mean, I just they. I always say they give me that. Mm. You know, before you have kids, it's like you're living for yourself. You yeah. Know? Right. Your day to day, your job, your money. You know, the things you buy. You're living for yourself. And I mean, that's great. That's nice. And right. Some people are just content with that, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but I always knew I wanted kids. Yeah. And um, it's it's rewarding. I'll, I'll just say that. Yes, I will. <laughs> I will agree with that. I, I second that for sure. It's it's definitely rewarding. And the self-awareness is definitely a thing here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yep. Got to watch out for the curse words. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everything, you know, even even like the actions, like say I would have had this idea. I mean, I did right before before my daughter. I mean, I didn't really have like the strongest drive right. came after me thinking that I wanted to push on her, like just to be courageous and do with it the things mm -hmm. she sets her mind to. Yeah. And that, yes, there's going to be fear, but, you know, um, but, but to give her that courage to do it still through the fear. Right. 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 Um, and I just never had that strong of a feeling other than thinking of her. That's true. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just, it's just so powerful. It's hard to quantify that, you know, when you're single, it's like, oh, okay, you know, this or that. And yeah. sure, some people are more driven than others or they know what they want to mm -hmm. pursue. But um, it definitely, they it's a different gear. Absolutely. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's a different gear. It'll get more when they get into, like, school age, when they have, like, the spelling bee or they have, you know, a play to try out for or, mm. you know, sports, whatever it is. And you want to encourage them to do it and... Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the times, you know, the, the way I handle my kids, um, like doubts or insecurities, is I like to give them examples, you know. Mm. And, you know, I like to relate to them, too. Like, I was scared and I was nervous, you know, but this happened and look what happened from it, you know. So um, I think a lot of even till now, it's it's still the same narrative that you, you know, you're told as a kid, just, you know, try new things, just go for it, just, you know. Put the fear away and try something new. Um, I, it still, it still applies as an adult. Mm, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, agreed, agreed. So you know, g growing up for you, um, was it? Did you have any, any like people you were inspired by? Um, you know, I know you mentioned y y working for your dad. Yeah. Um, but other than that, any other people that inspired you or? Um, I would say my grandmother, um, my grandmother was, you know, she raised me part of my life. Uh, she's very important to me. She's always been that rock in our family. Mm. She's been there for us. She's filled in for us. She's, you know, raised my brother and I, and she's raising my, my aunt's kids who passed away, you know, so 
I, I look at her, I look at her with like such admiration. She's strong. She gets up every day. She's 83 years old. She still gets up and puts on her makeup and her blazer and you know, she gets she she makes it a mission to get out every day and stay social wow. and you know, do things that are important to her and meaningful. Um, she lived a very long, meaningful life, you know, so I definitely admire my grandmother, her, her strength and leadership. Wow. Yes. I admire that already. (laughs) You know, waking up with a mission, you know, putting your makeup on and, and you mentioned she's now raising, um, Rel- your, my my uh, cousins, your yeah. cousins, yeah. your cousins. So you mentioned she she raised you part of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, what what like what was the age? So um, from about the time I was born until I was about four. Okay, and, and um, and then after about after high school, I lived with her. Um, and she, you know, she's. She's like a she's like a mom to me. That's how I look at her. She's really, really close to me. Um, so I learned a lot in that time frame. I think at that time after high school, I really needed that um, that womanly uh, love, love, and you know everything. You know just everything that she could teach me. Example. I think I needed mm. that, um, and she really taught me that. So I think uh, even just out of high school, I lived with her for about three years. I learned a lot. I mean, she taught me how to cook. <laughs> she taught me how to do a lot of things. Um, and just watching her too, she's very charitable. Um, so she, she definitely, you know, I, I, I would love to, to take after her. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I love that. Sounds, sounds like a, definitely somebody to be inspired by. Absolutely. And still, and still, still doing it. Mm-hmm. Still, still doing it. 83 years old. <laughs> <laughs> So. Yeah. So, do you have any siblings? I have one brother. One brother. Mm-hmm. Did you grow up with him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're very close. He um, he's a couple years older than me, <clears throat> but he had his kids after me, so uh, I was kind of like, I'm kind of like filling in, you know, just auntie mm. wherever they need it. I always feel, you know, even with friends, um, I always feel like I want to fill in and. I'm, I'm always the person that's like, if you need help, if you need advice, you know, if you want me to wash the baby, I'll wash the baby. Um, because, you know, I already know. <laughs> I've always just I kind of wanted to be that person for everybody. Mm. And I never want them to fill that void, especially my brother. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, part of the reason why it was hard for me to, um, you know, to get into mother sh- motherhood uh, is the fact that I didn't really have a mother figure. Um to kind of take over and be, be that helper. I think a lot of, um, a lot of moms have their own mom to kind of model after and, you know, someone they can truly trust, um, to Mm. come take over and, you know, leave the kids at their house or whatever it is. Right. Uh, so me not having that, I think it made it a lot harder. Yeah. Um, hence your mission. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, Oh, it, it all connects. Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned like you always kind of wanted to be that mom or even for your brother, yeah. be that be that person to to offer maybe some guidance. Absolutely. I mean, you already kind of you you became a mother before he mm-hmm. became a father. Is that right? right? right. Yeah. So, yeah. you so know, I didn't want him to fill that void. Yes. OK, that's <laughs> and, and now you're on your on your way to helping not just your brother or not just the people that you can, because you can, you can personally only help so many, right? Because right? you have your own life, and you have like personally, but you're you've you're you've figured out a way, and still figuring it out. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have the idea, and and you have set the the steps in motion already to help as many moms as can as as they want to to open their own doors to, to make it happen, and even dads. I mean, I and feel dads. like. I mean, it, it is, you know, I, I feel like it's mostly moms that do, you know, maybe need help. And maybe they're the ones that are having a hard time with asking for help. I mean, I can't speak for everyone in this, but there's a lot of single dads, too. And, you know, there's dads that, um, you know, that the, the, they're the, they are the default parent or, you know, they're stay at home parent. So, you know, I'm not limiting it to only moms. Um, 
but I, you know, just from my personal experience and speaking to um, a majority of the mothers. Right. Well, you know, I think speaking of um, like parents, like, or, or, or like the dads, I mean, mm-hmm. even if, even if um, say the, 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 I don't, I, I can't remember what you, what word you use, but the, the primary parent, the, the default, the default yeah. parent, the default parent, even if, it is say say in situations like when there's divorces. Right. Now after 2020, lots of lot people of divorced. Yep. Yep. <laughs> With not just one, two or three or you know or even My even... husband is not a divorce attorney, so <laughs> I know that for a fact. <laughs> there <Yep>. we go. <laughs> we have more inside information right there. He was busy. <laughs> he was busy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not not to laugh at the situation, yeah, people, um, but you know, just. <laughs> <clears throat> but there, it it is. I mean, it is it is happening, and mm-hmm. I mean, I have friends that you know had whoopsies, yeah, and now you know they're yeah. co-parenting, yep. um, and so even if they're not the default parent, mm-hmm. you know, they still maybe have some time with them, yeah, um, yeah. and um, you know, if if the parent. Or if the dad said or the non-default parent mm-hmm. gets them for X amount of time, but they don't really know, like, much about what to do right, and yeah. say it's not always an ama- like a, a, a peaceful divorce, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's not like, hey, ex-partner, mm-hmm. um, help here. It'll be easier for them to have an outlet mm-hmm. of, you know, such as like the village to get support with yeah. if they don't feel comfortable going to, with their ex. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That they could be. Yeah, definitely. That I, that's a great idea. Cause I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, you, I, I, I'm just thinking about yeah. that because there's just the thing with what your, your movement literally like there is just, I mean, sure, there there can be some patterns at some point where, okay, we have this similar scenarios, but at the end of the day, everybody's life is different, right? And the situations mm-hmm. are all different, um, and and the people involved are all different, and how it how it happens is all, yeah, you know, you know, different, or even you know, for parents that speaking of transportation, mm-hmm. um, sometimes you get into a car accident and insurance it's gotten up so much right and maybe they don't have that extra protection to get a rental car Mm -hmm. if their car is in the shop right so now and and you know you have now another option not just uber Mm -hmm. um to me i think the factor that's you know in the transportation part is it would be another parent mm -hmm. parents you know we have a lot to risk we're not going to do anything stupid. We have a family and we have kids. So, to, you know, for me, I would trust my kid with another parent. Yes. You know, that's personally, and I, I think a lot of parents can speak for that. I speak for that. And um, so, yeah, having, like, another parent, you know, help you with those things. And maybe they go to the same school, which is another thing. I would like to put mm. an option where you can find out, um, you know, what if that – other parents, kids go to your kid's school and might make things a little bit easier. Ooh, or right. After school care, you know, transportation, whatever it would be. Yeah, carpool and yeah. take the kids. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, options are, are limitless yeah. here. Yeah, there's so many, so many <laughs> different ways it can go. You know, I'm always coming up and like, oh, that would be a good idea. Like, <laughs> like almost right. like on a daily basis. And then, you know, I want to I want to make sure that, you know, when people are signing on to the platform, that I will guide them, uh, you know, videos or like, you know, through links or I'll, I'll give them ideas like, hey, this is, you know, you should probably do this and this and it will be better. You know, you might get a higher chance of getting hired if you do this, you know, so I want to add tips for people who are not, um, you know, entrepreneurial mm. you know, maybe they, they've never done something like this. So. Uh, you know, there's a lot of parents that do, uh, they are, they do have the entrepreneur spirit mm. um, and they can kind of get in there and just, yeah, that's, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to set this price, you know, I'm CPR certified, whatever it is that they, they would like to put on there, you know, for their profile so they can get hired. But then there's people that are not, but they need to make money mm-hmm. and they've never done something like that. So I definitely want to help guide a lot of these people as well. Like I, I want to be there um, and 
you know, offer help. Uh, customer service is another thing. I, I really want to make sure that people can reach out and ask questions, um, mm. you know, anytime they need it or get help when they need it. Um, I mean, I'm really in it because I want to help. I'm not really in it to, you know, get rich and famous or anything like that. I, I genuinely want to help people. So, yes. So I do think um, I'm going to do my best to make sure that that's one of the strongest suits of the the company, you know, I have a lot of, a lot of ideas. Yes. No, I mean, I, we're sitting here talking and, and I'm just like, for example, another one that I just thought of, it's like, say even say like, for example, us, we have our, our caregiver, thank God, you know, we have her, we're blessed, but on the weekend, say we want to go on a, on our, on a date. Mm -hmm. Now we, you know, we don't want to exhaust our, our babysitter. Right. She is already doing so much mm -hmm. right and and she needs time off too and maybe on the weekend right we just want to go on a nice date right and That's you true. know somebody can come in in just a few hours mm -hmm. um or we can take our child and and have a nice date because you know as you know especially with parents being busy right. whether you have multiple kids or you have a job or two or three mm -hmm. um and your spouse uh or, or maybe you're up by yourself you know what whatever mm -hmm. it is time it's hard to sometimes the hardest thing sometimes is to make the time yeah absolutely I agree. right i agree and it's it's very important nowadays i think it's you know life is just so demanding and you can get so caught up in it um and when it comes to, you know, your kids, it's, you know, it's hard. You know, you do a lot of, I think a lot of people are doing a lot of family time, you know, on the weekends. They do things together. They have the activities and sports, and but it's really hard to make time with your spouse. Mm -hmm. so. One other thing I would like to add um, is the good thing about this app is I think being able to bring your kid along is going to be like one huge thing. For, for a lot of these parents. Mm. So like you said, you want to take your, you know, go out with your husband on the weekend. Maybe somebody has one kid and, you know, she's like, I would love to take that job, but can I bring my kid? Sure. Bring your kid. Now the kids can play. <laughs> now the kids can get, a, you know. Oh my it's, gosh. It's, it's just, a double, double whammy yeah. right there. A lot of kids nowadays too are having a hard time making friends. Mm -hmm. Everybody is kind of like you know, on the tablets, on Roblox, just kind of like sitting inside the house. That's, I mean, that's our, that's our generation. That's how that's it is That's the new now. norm. It is normal. Um, but, you know, uh, if you can bring in a, you know, like an acquaintance or a friend or someone to, they can socialize with or play with, whatever it is, I mean, I think that would be amazing for both parents. 100%. So, yeah, that and that tackles also the issue of, you know, not being able to find a job because you don't have child care. Well, you can just choose a certain niche. It could be transportation. It could be just running tasks, bring your kid. You could be caretaking, you know, bring your kid with you or whoever needs to drop off their kid at your house. You know, you know that's a huge highlight, the fact that you can be – you can you can be your own boss. You can mm -hmm. be an entrepreneur in your own way, and yeah. bring your kid along. Right. And as a matter of fact, it's almost a, a wow. It's it's of a plus, right? Having extra kids because now kids can play with kids, right. and that's always <laughs> yeah. healthy. The kids, I think, when they see another kid, they usually just they you know they immediately kind of attract each other. It's definitely you know? easier yeah. for kids to make friends yeah. and for adults yeah. to make friends. Right. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, it's like they have no feel. They're just living life. Yeah. <laughs> like they're judgment-free. Right. They're just, they are yeah. uh, no filter. Right. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. 100%. 100, mm -hmm. 100, we, we should all have, I think, somehow, we, we should learn a little bit of, of, of kids and be kids at some, in moments too. You know, you I know? always look at it as, as kids, like are they are the most genuine form of like humankind. Mm -hmm. You know, they come into mm -hmm. the world without judgment, without um, even just the, their behavior. It's totally normal for them to react and respond and ask the questions that they do. And, you know, slowly over time we teach him like, no, you can't do this. You can't do that. It's rude. It's, right. you know, so it's, 
you know, their behavior really, it's, it's just completely innocent and genuine. Yes. And I, I do think that we can learn from them. 100%. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you know, and well, before I had, it reminds me before I had a, a child, I think I, I, I was listening to a podcast where it was actually uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, mm -hmm. but he was mentioning how, you know, he was explaining the beauty of kids, like their imagination mm -hmm. and, um, you know, how everything is an experiment, right. right, for them. And, you know, as parents, sometimes we, I mean, we're kind of a little going off track here, but as parents, sometimes we, we put like roadblocks, like, no, you know, you don't do that or can't do I this or can't one. do that. Yeah. And then he's like, it's like, for example, sometimes they can say they grab an egg and mm -hmm. they drop it in it you know, it cracks mm -hmm. and, you know, sometimes depending on the mindset of the parent at the time, they can be like, ah, look yeah. at the mess you did yeah, yeah, yeah. And versus using that moment as a moment of, uh, of learning. Right. Like, Ooh, look what happened. Right. Look what gravity does. Yeah. If you just let this drop and, you know, mm -hmm. making it. And so that always kind of stuck with me, um, especially as, as, um, you know, I'm like, oh, because I was, you know, I wanted to be a parent too. So I'm like, oh, okay, when I'm a, I'm a good point, because I probably would have been that parent, like, ah, look at the mess. <laughs> but now, yeah. I, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, it, you know, it comes with the whole parent thing, thing that there's no instructions, right? right? So, and, and learning from others, like learning from people that, you know, share their experiences and have been there. Yeah. Um, hence the village. It's like, what better than learning from people that are your neighbors? Because it's not like, oh, yeah, that works in California, but mm -hmm. it doesn't work here. We don't have a beach, right, you know? Right. Um, but, but, you know, side, we're talking about like all these added Ben or these benefits that are just a consequence of the platform being, having, you know, even having different perspectives and having, right. uh, hearing maybe ways to do certain things or, you know, it, it, kids go through stages, right? right? Different stages. And, and it's like, oh, okay, what do I do here? This is like a whole new child. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> yep. every stage is like that. <laughs> right. right. So, and it's like help parents, <laughs> you know, especially for, you know, people that may not have a whole lot of support, right. uh, whether they don't have it or whether they're just not in good terms or they don't trust them. Right. Um, whatever the case may be. Um, so I, 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 I'm telling you, I'm already coming up with all these ideas. Just, it's, just, just, it's endless. Definitely endless. <laughs> right. I know, you know, um, I didn't even get into the other categories. I think there was, uh, okay. let's, see. let's see, we can keep going. Yeah. 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 So for education, okay. You can do, um, religious studies, language, you know, if you want your kid to learn a language, um, you know, a lot of these like teachers, I know a lot of teachers are not very happy with, you know, this, this the system, the system right now. Yeah. So, um, you know, they can offer these things on the side, music lessons, Ooh. piano lessons, singing lessons, coaching, sports. Ooh. I mean, it's. Oh, totally well, you're endless. speaking to me right now because, yeah. um, one of the things we've actually kind of talk about and i mean we'll have to figure this out sooner than later mm -hmm. but it's like okay do we want to put them in a public school mm -hmm. okay well how much is, is private cost and okay one okay but how many kids do we want to have okay yeah you know what i mean yeah, <laughs> yeah. and um and then you have the you, you the idea then you know we're talking about the idea of of um homeschool you know, and it's like, well, homeschool with other parents that mm -hmm. are in similar yeah. places and maybe each parent can offer certain, we've thought about this. And I think even my neighbor said um, that one of, a, she knows of a church of parents coming together. Right. Um, I forgot what the church the name of the church was, but the parents are coming together and each has a different skill nice. and then they kind of help like teach these That's groups nice. right yeah. because why because um you, they feel like the public school system it's not only a, a lot of the one of the big concerns is safety oh, you know yeah, with absolutely. like shootings and stuff yeah. that like that 
Um, and and two, I mean, sure that that is a concern for us, but for two, for us, what we've thought about, it's like, well, how much dead time do they have at school that they can mm. be using in learning a skill such right. as, you know, and, and this is starting from like young, like pre-K, whatever mm -hmm. time they go to school, um, where, and especially as they grow up, it's like, okay, there's all, and I have, my brother is in high school right now. So, and he talks about all the dead space, all yeah, the dead time. They, do. they, they can just be on their phones because it's done with work or the teachers don't care or, yeah. or whatever the case may be. I'm talking, but my, my thing is the dead time. Okay. This is time that can be put into something fun, right? right? Like they can be playing a sports, learning gymnastics, mm -hmm. learning how to swim and all these things that could involve like being around other kids. Because one of the things at first was like, well, homeschool, well, uh, you know, then, then they're going to be really secluded. Right, right. But if it's with a group of other parents, parents yeah, that can actually work. You see, when parents, when parents get together, specifically moms, uh, they make things work. Mm. Uh, that's one thing I think that's a, that's a really like superpower of moms. Like when they want something and they want to do something or, you know, they don't have an option. They don't have many options. They will do whatever to make it work. And when you get a group of moms that are doing that, it's like so many ideas. I mean, you look at PTA. Our PTA is run, you know, my kids' school, all all moms. I would think maybe a couple dads might be in it. But it's it's amazing what they do sometimes. Mm. So the, the ideas they come up with, the events they, they put together, and, you know, all for the sake of the kids. So I can definitely see like how many ideas and collaborations come up from, you know, just being on our village. Right. I think it can definitely they can they can make some differences. Right. And <laughs> and this is, you know, stuff happening already without the whole background check and the whole account. Like yeah. once the platform is there and in place, mm -hmm. it just makes everything so much easier. Right. Absolutely. To me, I feel like it's it's almost like Every, you know, me being in these mom groups, it's almost like that, what I see every day, the ones that ask for help, the ones that, you know, need jobs or the ones that need child care. I'm offering that <clears throat> on a new pla on a platform. And, you know, now everyone is, you know, I, I feel like more people are hesitant to, you know, maybe meet with someone that they met from a Facebook group or hire someone from a Facebook group. So if they've already been vetted, and you can see the profiles, you can see their star ratings, you can see if they're connected to someone you know. That's a big you one, I think. You can see if they're in your kid's school. Mm. I mean, there's so many things, I think, that will help ease that whole um, Fear. trust issue. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, initially, it might be a little bit, uh, not hard, but, you know, I, I might have to try to figure it out a little bit. In the beginning, some some people might still be hesitant, and that's okay. Um, but I also know there's a lot of parents that don't really have an option. Right. They don't really have it. I've seen parents, you know, really in, in bad situations where they just have no other option but to come on to a Facebook group and ask for help. Like, I need to right. go to work. I have nobody to watch my kid. Who can watch my kid today? Anybody. Yes. And, you know, it's it's their livelihood on the line. And think about how many people are not reaching out for help absolutely yeah i think there's going to be i think there's a bigger majority of people of not asking for help for multiple things for multiple reasons maybe right. but you know you even mentioned earlier which is so true that a lot of the times we it's hard for us to ask for to help. ask for help even if they even even if, if if somebody says hey you need help sometimes you're like yeah, yeah you know it's okay. I'm okay i got it yeah i got it yeah, yeah now that now there's ready and willing people that are ready to help you right and you don't have to ask any of your family members or you know yeah i feel them. uncomfortable right taking right. you know yes um yeah that's uh one of the things too that that i thought about earlier we, we talked about like caregiving and i don't even know but you tell me if you have an idea of like the average cost of daycare Mm, it's expensive though. That's the rates have definitely gone up in the last few years. And I think for full-time care, you probably won't pay less than 
maybe 800 a month. That's a big chunk out of your That's paycheck. That's for one. That's just for one kid. For one kid. That's, I mean, that's full time if you want them full time. It can be a little less depending on where you go. But, you know, even from my personal experience, a lot of these daycares are, they are parents who are, you know, the caregivers. And a lot of them need to join um, a daycare so that they can bring their kid. They need a job. That allows them to bring their kid mm. and, you know, maybe give them a discount. So I'm, I'm sure that they have well meaning to it, but it's not for me. I like to I like to keep my kids in the school where the teachers are passionate about what they do. This is mm. not just a paycheck. It's, you know, what they enjoy doing. They're good at it. You they know, get to pick and choose. Right. right. So my kids currently like they're in a Montessori school and it's just amazing. The teachers have been there for years. Um but that's definitely like another thing where, you know, it can help a lot of the moms that, you know. They, yeah. They, well, you know, the thing is they're not going to hire for 50 moms so that they can yeah. get the these all these kids. Right, right. For, you know, there's only only so many spots you can <laughs> take um, to work and take your child there. Yeah. Right. But I and I mentioned that I say I, I haven't looked into the price because luckily I haven't had the need to. But. The fact I what I do hear a lot is that it's it's almost best to like for only one parent to work and the other one to stay at home because of how crazy like I mean, you'll be working to pay daycare, which. Right. Yeah. It just almost like cancels it's, out. Yeah. It's not worth it. It's like not <laughs> worth it. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's not you worth know, it. for 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 a lot of parents. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, that's in, you know, for some that are able to get a job at a daycare and bring, I didn't even know people do that, but mm -hmm. I mean, I can see that now, of course, <laughs> but there's only so many spots. Right. right. That's true. You know, so, um, but yeah, that's, uh, I think that is, that is a, a great benefit. Cause I do, I do see that quite a bit of uh, how, how costly it is. And for single parents. Yeah. That yeah. you kind of don't have an option. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you pay I, what you got to pay because you got to make what, however much you can make. Like I said, our parents are struggling. Mm. I think our parents in the communities are really, really struggling. I think they they need something like this. We need something like this. You know, in our modern day, um, life is just so demanding. And, you know, I always wondered... Um, you know, every time I would feel like this is so hard, you know, how do people do it? They've been doing it for thousands and millions of years. Um, but like, you know, they made it look so easy, like especially like in the 80s. Now we have so many restrictions. <laughs> we have a lot of restrictions. The cost of living is high. Everybody has, you know, lots of payments at home. We have lots of subscriptions, subscriptions Netflix, and, oh gosh, tablets, <laughs> phones, right. internet, like all these things that they didn't have back in the day. So distractions. You know, the cost of living is a lot higher, um, which requires requ requires everybody to work. So I I hardly know um a one one home bringing in just one income. You know, a lot of the times, even if it's just, you know, both of them are working, but there's a lot of people that work from home or mm -hmm. do the side jobs or whatever it is. It's hard to just make it on one income now. Mm -hmm. um, or even, you know, for, even for people that are, I think, even just, you know, they're doing well at the way they're doing, but but having a little extra can can help them take immensely. those those trips. Maybe they haven't been able to right. take those trips mm -hmm. or maybe, you know. Uh, been able to to afford maybe give their kids uh, maybe some of the things they've been wanting to give right. them and maybe they just at this moment they hadn't had really the way mm -hmm. to to make it happen right you know um we mentioned like other like uh, platforms that kind of offer services like that cater to people's families such as like doordash and and right. and, and things like that but though not if so you know that you could say okay well there's an option like that but the thing is a lot of people you know don't feel safe even with people right. getting you know don't don't feel safe out driving or people don't maybe don't like to drive and mm -hmm. this is where okay you don't have to drive look at all these other yeah. things you can do right you know what i mean it really it really gives everyone an opportunity to 
you know, just just earn a earn a living. Mm-hmm. You, do something. What do what you're good at. Do what you know. Do you know? You don't have to go um, spend two weeks training and you know waiting three weeks to get paid. And you know you don't have to do that. You can just start doing what you've um, what you what experience and skills that you've gained along the way through mm. your parenting journey. So um, yeah. To me, I'm just I'm trying to break in to our parents. I'm trying to help them. I'm trying to create a movement here. Yeah, you know, I I really don't feel like there has been much um, done to try to alleviate the issues that we're having that the the parents are having, um, the money issue, the daycare issue, the you know just being secluded. Um, the working issue, you know, yeah, it's really hard for, for a lot of the parents right now. So, and you know, sometimes, you know, life is just going so fast that, that, you know, even you mentioned earlier when, you know, you were a full-time mom, it was hard to even have any ideas because I mean, you barely even can take care of your own personal Mm -hmm. needs. Right. And so I feel like even for some moms that maybe they haven't thought that, hey, this is something that 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 could be useful. I Mm -hmm. think it just it it brings. It brings an idea or shines light to, to a problem maybe they didn't even know they had. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's uh, so it's like catering even to people that need or could benefit of a service that they don't even know. Right. Yeah. That could help them. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I can, I didn't think, you know, I could I'm like, I, I never like prior to our conversation, I know we talked about this before the podcast, but before that I didn't think, Oh, this would be really helpful. But as you know, we're sitting here mm-hmm. talking about, it, I'm like, Oh, like there's all these things that could benefit me. And I didn't even think. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think anybody uh, who's a parent can, benefit from it yeah (laughs) yes it's and i I would i would want it to be like an on-demand you know to me when i'm creating this app um to me i think a parent's day is already hectic Mm -hmm. it's already full it's crazy um a lot you know being a parent just comes with a lot of um mishaps right uh things don't work out as planned and (laughs) things come up all the time so you know, when I think of creating this app, I'm th- I'm keeping the whole parenting mindset in in mind. I love where that. the app, I want it to be simple, easy to use. Uh, I want it to be like uh, to have a calming, you know, vibe when you open it. Mm. It's not too much. It's not crazy. It's not too colorful. I want it to just be like something quick and easy and simple. <clears throat> you hop on. I need help. Oh crap! I forgot. I have to go do this. I need to pick this up. Blah, 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 blah. You know, some people I know they my have. child is sick. Can somebody bring me medicine? Right. Yes, yes. I my car is not working. You know, I need a ride here. Mm-hmm. My kids, whatever it is, <laughs> I want it to be on demand. And and you know yes. something that kind of like Amazon. Yes, <laughs> it's like Amazon. To me, I feel like it's Task Rabbit plus Care dot com plus um. Like Uber or something, you know, just yes. it's just on demand, Ooh. on demand, like help when you need it. Yes, I mean because a lot of time that is when you need it, and right. it's hard to plan for these unexpected needs. Yeah, yep, <laughs> yep, they pop up all the time, all the time. Right. So. Right. Yes. Okay. That's that's I I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. I mean, I I like I said, I'm already thinking of all these things. I I'm curious, you know, so far, I know I know you're you're still working on it, and you you still have a lot coming up. Uh, but what are some of the challenges you've had? Um, so some of the biggest challenges you've had to tackle so far. So, you know, initially I spent the last year and a half doing a lot of reading and research. And I said, okay, this year when my kids go to school, I'm going to take baby steps. I'm just going to see where it goes. And so as I started working on it I just you know there's no there's no baby steps honestly I didn't realize that Mm. but there's no baby steps I am full blown in the middle of uh, you know every day there's something to do um something to to add something to research something to you know so I have a marketing team I have a designer I have a developer everything has been good everything has been not simple I won't say simple it's very tasking every step of it 
but it's also been it's come with a lot of wins you know mm-hmm. so even like the smallest things like registering my llc um just for the fact that nobody took that name out i was like oh thank god i was so worried <laughs> Please work out. I, I don't know why. When I when I really thought of the name, I really just wanted it to be our village. I couldn't think of anything else. I just to me, that's what made more sense. This is all of our village. This is makes sense for sure. So um, the hard I think the hardest thing is probably the the development of the app. Mm. So my developer, he's he's amazing. Yeah, he's he knows how to do everything, but. Developer's job is not to lead in the design of it and the user inter- interface. Uh, that should be on me and the designer. So I think, you know, we we kind of break it break it up in into smaller like projects. Mm. We're running, we're going to work on like onboarding and then registration and then signing on and then. So you know, during this process, I'm starting to find the app is going to be is different than a lot of these gig gig apps you know usually uh the person who's requesting the service does not need to be background checked and they don't have to pay you know for the service um and then on the other side yeah so i i want everyone on the app to be you know background checked Mm -hmm. so me figuring out what everyone is willing to pay and then at what point do you get free services do you get to explore first Mm. you know before you know having to do the background check is that going to throw some people off probably um but again my ultimate goal for this is to offer safety and trust and um, an exclusive community Mm. so instead of um taking a cut from everyone's pay i don't want to do that that's also another thing that the gig apps are doing um I want to make it a subscription. So mm. that way it's exclusive. Not anybody and everybody can just join. Um, and of course, you, everybody has to have a profile. Um, so I would I would rather charge people like a monthly subscription to stay on board, stay on it, instead of taking from their pay. Um, and in this process, you know, we're looking at other apps and the way that they do it, but there's nothing like it. Mm. So me just kind That's of- That's how I know you're doing something right. Sorry, yeah, continue. It is. So I think right now my hardest, um, my hardest thing that I'm dealing with is how to set this up to in a way, in a way that makes sense. And then mm. also in a way that still makes everybody feel safe. Mm. And so- That balance. And then offering the simplicity. It's like Still finding the perfect that. recipe right. of for the cake for the baker a cake. Mm-hmm. Finding that per, for perfect recipe for, you know, yeah. Yeah. So, so and then, you know, uh, like I said I'm I'm getting people's opinions, I'm putting polls, I'm asking some of the people, I'm building relationships. Um a lot of people that, you know, um I'd like them to be like a, I call them a founding member, the the initial people on the app who are offering services. Um, I'm getting their opinions as well and just trying to build that relationship with all these people. Yeah. So, (laughs) yeah, I I do believe that um, it will work. Um, And I do feel like the community um, will help with that. You know, Mm -hmm. just, just, I think they are helping me. You know, they want it. They need it. I'm doing it. <clears throat> I'm going for it. And they are helping me get there. Yeah, so. I think that's the whole beauty of this. It's like it's everybody helping everybody. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah for absolutely. sure. Um, And I mean, truly, the hardest thing is to build the platform to right. make it happen. Right, right. That That is. Once I get that, I think everything else. I mean, I won't say it's easy. Then. You know, once I get the system down, once it starts working, um, then my next step would be to go for the funding. Just mm-hmm. start going for uh, the investors and all that good stuff. Yeah, so. and, and expanding it to help more families, right, right. basically. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 awesome. <laughs> that, yeah, and um, it, it's kind of like somebody that wants to join the gym because they want to lose weight, right? Right. At the very beginning, it's going to be very different Mm -hmm. because they're figuring it out. They're getting to know their body in a different way from like the the couch and the Cheerios and Mm -hmm. the sodas and the Netflix to, (laughs) you know, whole. so it's like every new 
thing has its own challenge. Yes. Yeah. Um, and at the very beginning, it's going to be the biggest bulk, um, and especially doing, you know, something new mm -hmm. and doing something that's never been done before. Right. So, yeah, I mean, the idea is great, but when you want to, um, show success, you have to show the growth. You have to show that you have a good system in place. You have to show that people are joining it. So yeah, it's, it's, you know, and you, you have to want to have the drive to get up and yeah. push it even on the days that you don't feel comfortable, the days you feel sick, the, mm -hmm. the days you just don't want to do anything because we all have those days. Yes, yeah, Absolutely. Um, right. And so that, that's, that's, that's really, that's really great. Really. It speaks a lot. Mm -hmm. It speaks a lot. Um, so f for what you're doing and, you know, especially doing it for not just for yourself, it, this is like, you have everybody's, uh, heart and mind right. because of what you went through, you know, firsthand, like the struggles. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yes. yep. Um, so I, I'm curious to know, like growing up with your father, you mentioned, you know, you helped him, um, you know, with his businesses and, uh, you know, he was, he was a big support in your life. What are some of the big things that, that you remember or some of the most memorable things of, of like, say like a, like a single father for some portion of the time? I think, uh, my teenage years with my dad, it was just me and him living together. Um, he didn't know how to raise a daughter, like a teenage daughter on the, on top of that. Um, he did his best and I, you know, I didn't make it easy. <laughs> so I know he had a lot of challenges um, with me and I think him just trying to do it all by himself, you mm. know, not ask for help. Mm. Um it, you know, kind of contributed to that. I think if he, if he had someone that he could trust to kind of help alleviate some of the situations or, you know, maybe have like a, you know, example, and just yeah. maybe like a motherly example or something, it would have probably made things a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, and and I ask because, you know, in, in some sense you were like, you were, kind of raising your kids almost alone your your husband was so busy at the right. time that you had most of that bulk and so you know just kind of thinking yeah. about it it's like you kind of saw you know your dad was yeah. kind of in that moment right. too yeah. you know I definitely saw my dad and I'm a lot like him he is a do-it-all kind of person mm. and he likes to do things he likes to stay busy stay active but um he just does it all and I kind of always saw him doing that and then I kind of took that mm. where I just kind of take over and do everything and stay busy, stay active. And I'm the do it all person. But, you know, he never really showed that mm. if he was struggling, he never showed that it was hard. He never, you know, it just he never broke character, to be honest. And, you know, me trying to do the all all those things um, it's a lot harder where, you know, I just some days you just can't. You just can't do it all. You can't be everything to everybody. Mm. So mm. definitely learning that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's that's interesting because in a sense, you 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 kind of grew up with with that parent that maybe you know could have benefited from something like the village. Mm -hmm. You know, so having that's uh, interesting. Now, in school, when you were in school, did you gravitate to any particular subject or sports when you were mainly like high school? Did you, did you know what you wanted to be growing up or, you know, after high school? I really, I didn't have a particular, I always knew I wanted to be a business owner. Just, okay. I guess just watching my dad. I, I never, we didn't really have that, um, uh, you know, blue collar and working nine to five type uh, structure in our mm. family. It was, you know, most of our family is just entrepreneurs. Okay. Um, and when you left to go to college to uh to Egypt what was what was what was your goals at the time what was yeah so at that time I I decided to leave I was 17 I graduated just a little bit early um but I wanted to move to stay with my grandma I, I knew that I needed that mm. and I didn't know it was going to be that long I thought it was just maybe just you know a few months 
Um, but it ended up being about three years. Mm. <laughs> so um, I made a life over there. I met a lot of really good people and still in touch with them till today. Um, and when I went to college, I did go to college there for a couple of years. I did business. So, you know, I always felt like I had that, that leader type personality, type A. Uh, I get things done. Um, but I never really got to apply it on my own thing. You know, mm. I, I've, I've run my dad's business for a while. And then, um, you know, I helped my husband out with some of his uh, things in the office. I used to do that. Um, and then we also have like an investment company, my husband and I. So I, I run all these things, but they're not my own thing. Mm -hmm. So this, this particularly. This is your baby. This is my baby. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely feel that way. Yeah. Okay. Very, 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 very cool. I mean, I, I love the fact that, I mean, aside from all the great stuff that comes with the pod, the, the, sorry, not the podcast, the, our village, mm -hmm. it's the fact that you are actually pursuing your passion, which I think that says a lot for anybody out there that mm -hmm. is hesitant on pursuing their passion because whatever limiting beliefs there may be at the time, mm -hmm. um, but not only that, it's like the example you're setting for your kids. Absolutely. And, you know, I love how you mentioned you're bringing them along. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they're ex excited with you on this growth. And <laughs> um, I think it's such a compassionate thing that you're doing that, you know, that like that's definitely going to, I think, I mean, it's, it's going to pass over to your kids. And at the end of the day, I think we all want a better world, Absolutely. you know, and, um, and I love that. I love that as a mom, it's same thing here. It's like, I want to, I want to be that mod. I want to be that, that person that, that my kids can see and, and model and, and, and learn and, and then, and then take that and then do their own thing right. with it. Absolutely. Um, any, any interesting or anything coming up that that you want to share with us um, anything coming so so i am doing the toy drive that's the next thing i'll be working on starting in december um and i think that just having um having the directory um that's going to kind of like test the the whole concept of our village so i I really, I kind of felt going into this, um, you know, I wanted to get the gathering. I wanted to get the following, let people know what I'm doing. Uh, but I have nothing to show right now. <clears throat> and, you know, I am developing it. But I, I'm excited about actually having that directory so I can kind of have something tangible and work with everyone and kind of offer, you know, the help and just kind of see where that goes. Mm. So... For the next three or four months, I'm not going to have the app. It'll probably, it'll probably be done by March. So until then, I'm kind of excited to just kind of implement that and see how it works and start working with it. Um, how, how can people sign up or, or help um, and get, get involved? Sure. So uh, right now, I do have a landing page. Um, and I have it up for signing up if you want to... Uh, become a service provider you would go sign up fill out your information uh, and then you'll be um, included into like the email list and marketing list just so that we can get information out when it's time to <clears throat> get on the platform uh, you know do your profiles uh, all the beta testers as well uh, we have an ad circulating right now for beta testers and there's a lot of good feedback coming from that so the landing page is www.ourvillageapp.org. Mm, so okay. if you want to, uh, you know, get informed, get information, go there or join the Facebook group. Yeah. And you are you just on Facebook or? I'm also on Instagram. We just started Instagram. I am t starting a TikTok. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then, you know, next door, I'm kind of gathering the neighbors. Yes. Yes. Okay. Very, very nice. Lots of cool stuff coming up and this is just the beginning. Um, how can, and is that the best way for people to like reach out if they have any questions? Yeah. I mean, like I also say, have an say, email. say like, Oh, um, you know, um, it sounds interesting. I'd like to sign up, but 
you know, I have these questions. Sure. Send an email. It's mm. info at ourvillageapp.org. Mm, there so we go. Send an you know, email. I'll respond. We'll respond my team. So, yeah. Very nice. There it is. Is there any any anything you'd like to share with us before we wrap it up? Um, <clears throat> yeah. I am... Um, you know, I'm, I'm open to anyone who wants to offer, you know, collaboration, anyone who's doing uh, something along those lines of what our village uh, encompasses. Um, anyone who has ideas, I, I'm come to me like I am. I'm open to this. I don't just have one one particular thing in mind. Of course, I have my ideas, but I'm so open to collaborating and expanding and adding ideas mm. so if anyone who wants to you know kind of be a part of this journey and you know, join me on it i'm very open to it and you know let's just see where it goes i mean i'm all in and you know beautiful yeah. beautiful yeah i mean that just shows where your heart is you know Absolutely. i and and i appreciate that yeah i appreciate that what you're doing for the community overall we all want to live in the best community possible mm -hmm. because in hard times, um, the strongest communities are the ones that come out of it faster. Right. Yeah. And so, um, you know, anything to add to the community and make it stronger and together and, and sure it's becoming a big city, but we can make it feel like a village. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we can do that. So every episode I end with two final questions. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them, the first question is, what is the greatest piece of advice you've ever received? <laughs> uh, I would have to say, because I have such a big heart and I'm, I'm really generous, you know, time and everything. Uh, if someone is asking you for money, for instance, um, and it's your friend. You don't want to lose that friendship. Only give them as much as, you know, you wouldn't be upset if they never gave it back. If they mm. didn't give it back to you, you're not going to be upset over that amount. Okay. Okay. So I, I apply that to almost everything, time or effort or whatever. Like mm. I, give what you are okay with giving, because if you give more than that and you don't get but get you know back what you expected from them you won't be upset mm -hmm. and I kind of apply that to you know I I try to give wholeheartedly you know but um I think just me like I said I have a big heart and I kind of learn to um set boundaries set some boundaries yeah so yes and I, I kind of apply that too because I don't want to lose friendships and relationships and I don't want to get upset so yeah you know I think that's very wise because I think we've all done something at some point <laughs> yeah. giving whatever it is money time mm -hmm. help whatever right um and then sometimes you feel like you lend a hand but then they take your foot but then you think oh that was my fault because right. I didn't, you know, yep. I, I should have done this or that. So, yeah, I think that's very wise for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. And the second, the final and second question is, uh, what is your personal definition of happiness? Uh, happiness. I think a lot of people chase this and they think it's something or a situation. I think happiness it's not something that you can really chase or mm. find. I think happiness is something that you create. So, Ooh. you know, not everything is always going to be perfect and it's not always going to work out. And it's, you're not always going to get everything you want. This is life. Um, but if you just make your happiness along the way and I mean, that's it. You create it. <laughs> yes. It's it's something you create, yeah. not something you go after. Right, right. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I For sure. Okay, well, Rhonda, I want to thank you so much for your time, uh, for sharing with us your amazing ideas and reaching out and and help and you know just putting your heart out there to help others based on your own personal experience and although it probably it sounds like it hit you a lot when with your first child it sounds like you know it's been something that was it's been kind of in your life growing up even yeah. so yeah. um 
I love how passionate you are about it um, and that you're going to do it until it succeeds. Yes. Yes, I am. So that's my goal. And thank you for having me. Thank you for giving me your time. My pleasure. <laughs> All right, everyone, tune in. Check it out. Our village in Arlington and DFW. So check it out and go find some help and give some help and do something for the community and yourself. Yay. <laughs> All righty. Thanks, everyone. Till Thank next you. time.